Hey everyone, welcome back. So today, we're going to be taking a look at another Nintendo Switch controller review. Now, the controller that we're going to be taking a look at today is by a company called Easy SMX, and the model is the ESM4108. Now, this controller is actually a review sample that was provided to me directly by Easy SMX. However, for all of you out there, I want you to know that this is not a paid review in any way, and all the opinions and what I think and how I'm going to score this controller is 100% my own review. So the only thing Easy SMX provided to me was the controller itself. They also asked me to share a link with you guys and give you a discount code for 15% off the controller. But it is not an affiliate link and has no link to my channel itself. It's just a discount code for you guys. So if I can save you money, why not if you end up wanting to pick up this controller? Also, if this is one of the first reviews you see of mine, I do have an exact review process that I put my controllers to. And if you want more information about that, I actually have a specific video on my channel that you can take the time to look at if you really want a lot more information. However, all the major points and I would say the most important information will be discussed in this review. So by the end, you should have a pretty good idea if this is a controller you want to pick up or not. One last thing before we get started on the review, don't forget that if you like what you're seeing, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already because it really does help out the YouTube algorithm a lot and the more views I get, the more reviews I can make for all of you. Now, as usual, let's start with a close-up view of the controller. The first thing, I always like to take a quick look at the box. Now the design on the box is actually quite simple, but it's not necessarily a bad thing because I find it looks good. Basically, you have the Easy SMX logo right here. You have a simple identification that it's a game controller. If we switch to the sides, we have a quick identification of the model of the controller in the box. You have your contact information from the manufacturer, which is a Chinese company. The rest of the box is quite bland with actually naked sides. And at the back of the box, you have Easy SMX Gamer's Choice, which is sort of like their catchphrase, if you will. But now let's get to the good part. Let's see what's in the box. So once we get in the box, other than the instruction manual that I put aside, you have the controller and you have a charging cable. The first good news and the first pleasant surprise is that yes, the controller does charge with USB type C. So it's actually compatible with the Nintendo Switch stock charger. And that is good news because although the provided charging cable charges the controller just fine, it is only a three foot cable. But if you want something longer, just use your stock Switch charger. Now that we put the cable aside, we'll look at the controller itself. And the first thing that you have to know about this controller is that its sale price is only $35. And with the 15% discount that they provided, overall this ends up being somewhat of a $30 Switch controller. So although we're gonna be reviewing it against every other wireless controller we have on the market, it's good to know that theoretically for a wireless rechargeable controller, this is really on the cheaper end of the spectrum. Now, if we start with the general feel of the controller, the overall shape and size is very reminiscent of the actual official Nintendo Switch Pro controller. However, when you get it in your hand, you see that the controller is actually quite a bit lighter and the plastic isn't quite as strong or rigid as the official Nintendo Switch Pro controller. However, for an off-branded Chinese controller, it actually feels a lot better than I was expecting. And overall, the plastic quality, I would say, is almost on par with the official third-party manufacturers such as Powerade or PDP. If we move on for the analog sticks, I was actually once again really pleasantly surprised because a lot of the analog sticks on these cheaper controllers are mushy and not quite as tight. However, these are actually feeling very close to the official Pro Controller uh, and actually a lot better than even some of the other third-party manufacturers that I've tried. I'd say that they're very close actually to the wireless Hori pad. Now, if we move on to the D-pad, this is something that a lot of these off-brand controllers actually don't get right, but I've got to admit that for the Easy SMX, the D-pad is actually quite responsive, quite good. It has a nice, tight, responsive feel to it, 
and so far I haven't had any problems with uh, even the more complex half circles, 360 inputs for any type of fighting game. Now if we move on to the rest of the face buttons, this is maybe the part of the controller that I like the least because it has glossy buttons for your Y, X, B and A. However, uh, once you see the extra features on the controller, you understand why they put a glossy sort of transparent feel on the buttons. It's not bad, it just really depends on your personal preference. I rather have a matte finish on these buttons, especially when you get sweaty, I find it doesn't slip as much on the buttons. But uh, overall, they are responsive, they, I've had no problem with the inputs, so they're not bad, they're just not what I prefer. Honestly, there's not much to say about the plus minus uh, capture button and home other than the fact that they're all there and that they work perfectly fine. Now, the triggers are uh, clicky for your R and your L. However, they are analog triggers on the ZR and ZL. That's partially because this controller is also compatible with PC, and since some games need those analog triggers, well, they put analog triggers at the, at the back. Personally, if you've seen any of my other reviews, you know that I don't quite like analog triggers for the Switch. However, these do not have a long travel distance, so I've got to say they're on the better spectrum of the analog triggers to my feel. And basically, uh, the Nintendo Switch only recognizes digital inputs. So when you're talking about a Switch-only controller, I really prefer having a clicky digital triggers at the back. But overall, they're actually pretty responsive, and I like that they actually have quite a bit of bounce back, meaning that they take their original position quite quickly. So the last thing I wanted to show you about the overall design before we take a look at a couple of the features is that the back of the grips are texturized. I don't know how much the camera is picking up on it because this camera isn't the best at close-ups, but if you don't, uh, if you can't see it properly, just know that they're really te nice texturized grips and actually the feeling is really pleasant in your hand. Uh, overall, it's an appreciated little add on to the design. Now we're getting to the features on the controller. So number one, this controller does have rumble. It does have motion controls. However, it does not read Amiibos or what's called NFC. And as you can see right now, one of the special features of the controller is that when it's on, you have the option to have it backlit. Now we're getting to maybe one of the major uh, down points of the controller, in my opinion, when you're using it for the Nintendo Switch. It's that normally this controller is supposed to have a turbo function. However, they didn't put a dedicated turbo button, and when you're in Nintendo Switch mode, the button that normally serves to activate the turbo is, becomes the capture button. What basically that means is that your turbo functionality does not work when it's in Switch mode. Now this isn't the first controller like this. A lot of 8-bit Doe controllers have the exact same problem where the turbo button becomes the capture button when it's in switch mode and therefore you can't actually use the turbo functionality on the controller. But it is a downside to this controller and I thought it was really important to say it because if you're using it on PC, it actually has a turbo function on it as well. One other thing is that normally the rumble is supposed to be adjustable uh, to five different levels. Once again, that uses the functionality of this button, but you can't adjust it. However, what you can adjust very simply on this controller is the uh, actual level of lighting you want on the controller. It's done by holding the ZL and ZR buttons, the right analog stick down, and then basically if you press up and down on the D-pad, as you see, you can even turn off the backlit if not, when you press up, it gets brighter, brighter, and brighter till the maximum level, which is level four. So far, I've been playing with this thing with maximum backlit on it, and the battery easily lasts over 10 hours of gameplay, meaning that I was once again pleasantly surprised by that end. So even if you wanna leave the lighting on, you don't have to worry about your battery burning out like in an hour or two. So the last thing I always like to show you guys, the pairing process for the controller, very simple you go to your controller section of your Nintendo Switch, you choose your change grip order to put your Switch in pairing mode. For the controller 
to have it pair in switch mode you hold down the Y button and the home button for a couple of seconds once the controller starts flashing you can let them go and within 10 to 20 seconds you'll see it'll pair with the, with the switch it popped up and we're ready to go your controller is paired after that process, you don't actually need to hold down the Y button anymore. Once it's paired with your, your switch, you just hold down the home button for two seconds. The controller turns on and will pair with your switch automatically. Unfortunately, though, it's really important to note that this controller does not wake up the switch. So you need to turn your switch on first and then turn the controller on for it to pair. Great. So now that we have a much better idea of what this controller is working with, we'll be able to get to the scoring on this controller. One thing that I just want you to keep in mind throughout this whole review of, is the price point of this controller being only 30 to $35. Because honestly, for that price, it's a pretty solid offering. Is it the best? I'm not sure, but it's a solid offering. So as usual, the first category we look at is the overall build quality and feel of the controller. And this controller is gonna be scoring a very decent four out of five. Why four out of five? Well, as I said in the close-up of the controller, the feel on the controller is very close to the official Nintendo Switch Pro controller, although not quite on point, because like I said, you can tell that the plastic is of a slightly lower quality. However, the really responsive joysticks and D-pad and the really texturized grips on the controller is really worth that one extra point. I was debating between three or four out of five, but really those extra points just pushed it to the four out of five. So if we move on now to the second category, which is the overall features on the controller and the aesthetics of the controller, it's going to be getting a good score of six out of 10, but honestly, this is where this controller maybe lost a few points that it could have easily recuperated if only all its functionalities were available in switch mode. So just to go over it quickly, like I said, the controller does have motion controls. It does have rumble. However, it's not haptic feedback. It's traditional rumble. It also has a rechargeable battery. It's wireless. And on top of it, it has that backlighting. I'm also giving it that one extra point for the aesthetic. Although it's not anything special, it has a nice clean design and it's I find it's an attractive controller that can easily fit in any setup and won't look out of place. However, as I'm reviewing this as a Switch controller, like I said, it's just really disappointed that I couldn't give it that extra point for having turbo functionality and even having an adjustable rumble setting. Like I said, a little disappointing, but overall, so far, not a game breaker. So now we get to the part that pretty much everyone was waiting for, the actual gaming scores. So as usual, we're gonna start with the first gaming category that I look at, which is action and FPS games. And in this category, this controller is going to be getting a really solid 8.5 out of 10. Now if we're wondering for a quick breakdown of the score, well, it's very easy, as I've mentioned before, the controller is very responsive. It has everything you need for an action FPS game, which basically means it has motion controls if you need that for aiming. It has very responsive joysticks. The buttons are clicky and respond well. However, I can't score it any higher in my opinion because I prefer clicky ZL, ZR triggers and we have analog triggers on this controller. It's not a bad thing, but for the Switch, I don't like the feel since they don't, they're don't they not actually needed to have that analog functionality. And there are other controllers that offer a functional turbo functionality that can sometimes help you out in some of these games, which this controller is not offering. And overall, the rumble is very good, but it's not haptic feedback, so it can't get that perfect score. Now the second category we look at are traditional 2D side scrollers or platformers. Now in this category, the controller is gonna be scoring once again a very decent 8.5 out of 10. Now this time around, you know that for this section, I really want a solid D-pad, because although a lot of platformers can be played with joysticks, a lot of purists want to use that D-pad. And for 2D side scrollers and platformers, this is a very solid D-pad. It's not the best I've tested, but it is a very solid, it is very responsive. 
And once again, the reason it's not hitting that perfection is because we're let down by the fact that the turbo functionality doesn't work. And overall, it is not the overall best responsive D-pad that I've tried. So I'm not going to give it a higher score than that 8.5 out of 10. Now we get to that third category, which is one of my favorites, 2D fighters. And in this category, the controller is going to be scoring a respectable 8 out of 10. Now, if the D-pad was important for side scrollers, it is mandatory for this section, which is 2D fighters. And the reason this controller is scoring an 8 out of 10 is basically coming back to the same reasons over again. The D-pad is solid, but it's not the best. And since this category really depends on that, that's why it's scoring slightly lower, because as I said earlier, it's a solid D-pad, but it is not the best. However, at this price point, I've got to say that it's one of my preferred D-pads. So to be, get a better D-pad than this, you generally have to go into a much more expensive controller. However, for the 30 to $35 price point, this is a very solid offering for a entry-level 2D fighter. However, if you're really serious about it, this is maybe not going to be your preferred controller. Also, the fact that you have analog ZL and ZR triggers, meaning that in fighters where you really want that clicky, responsive feel to your triggers, it's probably not going to be, once again, the best overall feel. Now, the last, and actually for this controller, going to be the highest scoring category that we look at, are racing games or kart racing games. And in this category, this controller is going to be scoring an awesome 9 out of 10. So for this category, we put that D-pad aside because for most racing games, it is not something that's needed. Or if it's needed, it's a secondary function, which doesn't matter if you don't have the best D-pad in the world. However, the analog sticks on this controller are really, really solid and the motion controls are very responsive, which is why I'm scoring it a lot higher in this category. Also, the fact that the turbo functionality doesn't really impact most racing games at all, which means that basically I'm not going to deduct it any points for it not working in this category. I obviously would have preferred haptic feedback to really feel those off-road conditions, you know, in a better format, but the standard rumble does well, but that's also one of the reasons that the controller is not getting a perfect 10 out of 10. But overall, for racing and kart games, this is a very solid offering. So overall, that brings us to a score of 44 out of 55. Now, that is one really decent score. At 44 out of 55, at this price point, this is putting it in one of the best price for quality controllers out there. Now, the only thing I really can tell you about this controller is how it will fare over time. Is it a controller that will break down after a few months or will it be a controller that will last you for the long haul? However, like I said, by the first indications of this controller, I'm not really too worried about those aspects. And I'll tell you right away, I was really surprised when I received this controller. Like when I was contacted by the manufacturer and offered a review sample, I was expecting something on the lower end of the quality spectrum. But you know what? Sometimes you're pleasantly surprised and this is one of those occasions. Now, I'm not going to tell you that this is the best wireless controller out there because I would be lying. I would say the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, the official one, is better than it. And there are other controllers, if you look at the other reviews on my channel, that are better for certain of the gaming categories. But for a decent all-arounder, this controller is a really solid offering. The only seriously nagging point that really disappointed me is the fact that when you put it in Nintendo Switch mode, that turbo functionality doesn't work. Especially when it's something that could have been easily resolved by putting a dedicated turbo button on it. Let me just take another controller quick for something, you know, for a quick comparison on that point. Now, this is the PXN 9607, another off-branded controller that we reviewed a few months ago. And it has its own dedicated turbo button. And I compare these two controllers because they have majorly a lot of the same functions. However, now after testing the Easy SMX, the feel, the joystick and the button quality is a lot higher on this controller. But the PXN offers you that turbo functionality with that dedicated button. If we could only combine these two controllers, the feel of the buttons, but the dedicated turbo button from this one, we would pretty much have a really serious contender 
and challenger to the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Because we would have a very comparable controller, but with added functions that could actually compete with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller at half the price. But overall, I may be griping on the controller a little too much for that one downside, because like I said, it's not even only this controller that does it. 8-bit though does have the same problem, unless you have the uh, latest controller that they have that you can actually remap the buttons on a PC, but you do need to plug it into a PC first. Uh, it had all those their controllers may mostly have the same problem where you actually can't use the turbo functionality on the switch because the turbo button becomes the capture button. So now overall, I think you have a pretty good idea of whether this controller is good for you or not. I hope this review was useful to you. Like I said, don't forget that I left a, a discount code down below if you want to save 15% if you're going to go buy this controller. Uh, you can order it directly from the SMX website that I linked down below as well. Just a quick shout out and thanks once again to SMX for providing a free review sample because it's really appreciated. And just before we go, another quick reminder to all of you to, if you haven't already, to hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't already. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.